Customer service departments are under a huge amount of pressure from triple demands of increasing churn, uh, high costs, and also ensuring that you can provide great customer service to very demanding customers. How can AI reduce the burden for customer service departments? Let's start with call routing. Um, I'm calling into the call center. You know my phone number. So there's access to all of my billing and all of my transactions, and I can be instantly segmented into one of thousands of groups of, of like people. Um, and based on the time of day of the call and the frequency of my calls and recency, you can assume that I'm calling for, you know, pick one of 20 reasons and with high degree of confidence that I'm probably calling for this. Therefore, I can route that call to the customer service rep who is best at dealing with that kind of problem from my kind of segment. So right away, I am handed to a human who is more likely to be able to solve my problem. I'm, I am not sent to a call center in India. I do not have to listen to the, the discussion, the, the question and answer tree to get down to, look, all I want to do is this thing. Do we have to start here? Yeah, we, yeah. So let's let the machine take care of the call routing. As I speak with natural language processing turning voice into text and text into meaning, then the machine can work with the customer service rep to say, here are the five likely things that Jim is calling about. And as soon as it hears me explain my problem, it highlights the one that I am calling about. Open that up. Well, here's the, here's the paragraph you have to say, uh, whether it's by policy or by law. And then here are the five things you can offer, uh, depending on how is, how is Jim today? Does Jim have a simple problem? He'd just like to get an answer. Does Jim have a pretty serious problem and he's concerned? Is Jim irate and needs a solution now? And just from listening to my voice, the machine can change what resolution options are available to the human. Now, the human in the loop is absolutely critical because Jim is often irate and wants a solution now, but he also wants empathy. He also wants somebody to say, oh, they're there. He wants somebody who understands the problem and is so sorry. And Mr. Stern, we have a solution for you. Like, ah, made my day. I am, I am not going to go to the competitor. I'm going to stay here because you, you get me. And that's the machine in the background working with the human. Now, on the other hand, there are cases where I have a very simple problem that I know there is a very simple answer to, and I really don't need to talk to a human. I just need to get the answer. I can go to the website, I can go to the app, or I can go to the chatbot. And the chatbot, I can type in a simple question, and the chatbot can look at, you know, there's 7,000 ways to ask that question. It's probably he means this thing, here's the answer. What is my bill today? How many times did I call Wisconsin? Um, I am traveling to a foreign country and how you know, will, will I get service? These are standard questions that can be answered in a heartbeat by a chatbot. It'll take me longer to get a human to answer and it'll take me forever to try to find it on your website. So there's a place where I don't want to talk to a person. I just want the answer. And understanding you know, text to meaning access to my customer data to pop up the answer within a second. Um, well, you, it goes back to your comment about customer expectations going through the roof. I expect everybody to know everything I've ever bought from them like Amazon does. I expect people to anticipate my question. And, and that's, that's not going to roll backwards anytime soon. Customer expectations will grow and grow and grow full stop. And that's, you know, that's where you have to keep up with your competition. You've got to provide better customer service. So how can AI help to create this utopia of proactive care to resolve issues before a customer complains, to preempt those complaints? Is that possible? Absolutely, because it's all based on prediction. So um, uh, equipment failure is, is the first one that comes to mind. Um, we think there is going to be an outage you should know. Um, we think your device is about to fail um, based on its usage, based on how old it is, based on all of the other failures we've seen. You, Jim, fall into this sub-micro segment of our customers 
who act the same way, who travel as much as you do, who use their phone the same way, and you are just minutes away from that thing having a horrible failure. Um, we would like to solve that before it happens by sending you a new device now. Click here. It's like, you're just trying to sell me something. No, we're trying to lower our cost of support, so we're going to provide this device. It's a standard upgrade, but we're going to cut the price on the upgrade. We're going to give you a really super deal because out the back end, it'll save us a lot of money in customer care and device management and maintenance, all of that stuff. So you'd be doing us a favor by accepting this new device. It's like, oh, well, thank you very much. Um, now, the best proactive is solve the problem before it happens, and I don't even know about it. Uh, a network outage. Uh, this, this stuff is being used in network management from days of yore. So yeah, spot the problem that's going to happen, fix it. I didn't even know it was there. Thank you very much.